My name's Paul. Yaroslav. And Paul, today you're going to show us Office and uh, so 2013. What yeah. are you going to show us? Microsoft's going to release the next version of Office uh, coming up pretty soon. And uh, we're running the uh, tech preview, um, the consumer preview that was released just recently. And what we thought we'd do in this is just go through some of the major changes uh, that your uh, the users are going to see. There's a couple kind of positive ones, so we're just going to spend the next couple minutes and talk about it. Right. So you you unlike most people, you took a complete plunge and <laughs> right? jumping with both feet. Right. You you Paul put it on production uh, on his sort of production system, right, and is yeah. using it for daily work, right. And that's really the best way to evaluate it, right, yeah. just to make sure things are working. Yeah, and so. it uh, and it, you can test all the interdependencies and all all the things that you really do in work. It, I find if you use it on a test system, you, you tend not to use it enough. Yeah, yeah. So overall, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumbs up. Um, yeah, yeah right. I think it's good. You know, yeah. so uh, probably the biggest thing that worried me originally was <clears throat> that it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So that, uh, originally, it's installed on Microsoft's application virtualization technology, right. originally called AppV, and it's been around for a long time. It's uh, mature technology, um, and they had been talking about releasing Office under AppV for a long time. Yeah. And so it's good to see that this is the version that that's happened. Right. Um, originally there were some issues with it. It looks like they've nailed those issues around uh, 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 having Office run inside a virtual bubble and being able to reach outside that bubble to mm -hmm. catch capture devices and interact with other programs. Right. So that, that piece alone, one that's app, uh, the virtualization is much uh, smoother and um, you know, it's it's easier to manage, right. and of course, updates are automatic. Right. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to cover licensing with that. Right. And um, it's it's streamed, right? So it's streamed. basically, it's not doesn't doesn't take forever to load uh, or to install. Well, you had some time to load the first yeah. time. Though. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, once yeah, exactly. If you click on much of things in a ribbon, we'll see that. We'll yeah. probably won't see it because you have it installed. You, you, you install it first, it takes like you know very little time and then you click on much of things and it just takes forever because it's really loading as, as you're using it. That's right, yeah. Which, so it loads down block one and block two. Uh, block one the first time, block two as you use it. Um, but that from an end user perspective was seamless and I was really impressed right. with how that kind of worked. Well, let's um, take a look at it. Hang yeah, on. so you know, right off the bat, let's talk about that. Um, so here I have, it shows that you know it's which products that I have, and uh, that it um, uh, the update options and the whole I the whole idea about this virtualization piece is that it does run in its own sort of single file. It's not installed in the local registry, um, and that the updates are seamless because it really is just a sort of single file and it updates continuously. So very very good. The other big change is, is that the integration with SkyDrive is seamless. So, you know, uh, uh, saying that I've been a Dropbox user for a long time, um, I, I'm glad to see that SkyDrive now has clients for cross-platform, right? I use an iPad and I use an iPhone as well. SkyDrive has iOS um, clients to be able to sync up my files across, across that. But what's more important in Office is that it's integrated, the SkyDrive integration is integrated, which is really a, a positive that I can sort of take all my files to go and I don't really have to worry about emailing myself to yeah. and stuff like that. So is that the stuff basically going, as, as you save stuff into my documents, is that how, how it works? Uh, no, uh, SkyDrive has a client uh, on that runs uh -huh. and uh, it's a, just a folder. Okay. And you can create subfolders, but that f that folder is replicated into the cloud. Okay. And then the, there, if you run the iOS or the Android mm -hmm. client, it replicates those things down to those particular devices. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So very seamless. Uh, I was very uh, happy about that uh, type uh, piece of it as well. Cool. The other uh, big thing, of course, is um, you know with the upcoming Windows Surface, is you know they have to have a version of Office that was going to work with touch mode, so yeah. of course. Well, not even Surface, right, but everything else, I guess. Right? Yeah, well, touch, touch screens are coming out and they're, they're commonplace, and so Office now has the ability to touch mode for, you know, fat-fingered people like me, <laughs> and uh, so 
if you do put it on touch mode, of course, it makes it easier. Uh, I don't have a touch screen on here, so it's not really going to help me very much. Um, but uh, that's one of the big changes. So if you are running a uh, RT, uh, like a, one of the Windows 8 devices, uh, um, you'll be able to use Office with your fingers, which is a very good thing. Which is cool. The other thing that I really like to hear is they have they they have this basically, um, and you saw I saw this in Windows 8 as well, where you can basically just run Word completely with no menus at all, and, and like if you're reading and stuff. And I think this is just an awesome thing. Getting rid of all the junk, using all the real estate of the screen, mm -hmm. and making it clean that if I do have a document, I can I can use this. And again, this is really around uh, the the surface and being able to util utilize all of the real estate that's on the screen without all the, all the sort of busy menus and clumpy kind of stuff there. So, you know, big thumbs up on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, uh, you know, touch mode integrated with SkyDrive, uh, running an AppV in a virtualized space. Um, interesting, we're actually running Project in it right now right. as well, the virtualized version of Project. Do you and, want to show that? Um, yeah, I can yeah, uh, bring that up. Okay. Would you want to talk about Agavis while I... Right. So the, the, the whole framework, uh, the extensibility framework, uh, right? So what, one of the biggest challenges uh, uh, was to, you know, with extending Office applications was to, um, you know, have to create add-ons, right? And they're not always compatible with future versions, with past versions. So there's always this hell uh, with, with extending it. So now with the extensibility model, you can uh, uh, pretty much get uh, you know the extensibility components hosted somewhere else elsewhere, and using a client object model access the uh, uh, the document content. So, for instance, you can highlight something uh, in the document, and then uh, or highlight the paragraph, let's say, and say, you know, uh, kick kick in this, you know, this little extensibility panel kicks in, and you can say, all right, um, uh, launch approval on this, or or launch review on this, right? So you can integrate with, let's say, collab. Uh, with SharePoint, for instance, or you could, you know, launch a translator, which I'm sure right. something like that is going to be out of the box. But yeah. uh, it'll be interesting where developers are going to take that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So I uh, just, you know, this is the same kind of interface. Uh, this is tends to be project. You know, I'm writing a project mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, this looks quite busy. Uh, you know, we won't bring that up very much. But um, yeah. So uh, very impressed. Uh, so far, and um, Outlook. Um, yeah, let's bring up Outlook a little bit. Um, We're not going to see all the all the details because it's a little zoom, zoomed out, but kind of like a give a better view of Outlook. things. There we go. Uh, yeah, so there it is again. Of course, the big thing down here, uh, the biggest change to Outlook. You know, you have calendars, you know, people some tasks down the bottom. Again, this is really around the touch interface. That's yeah. making it easier. Yeah to do those types of things in the touch interface. Uh, one of the big changes that I saw right away was um, that the uh, the LinkedIn and Facebook automatic updates for photos and stuff were much more seamless and then it pulled way more information. So if they didn't have pictures in their things, uh, their contacts, they, they get them automatically. So uh, quite, uh, quite happy about that. So overall, uh, thumbs up. Uh, this little smiley face in the corner here in the preview. If you like something, you can hit a smiley face. So I'm going to send a smile. Yeah, yeah. Here. So. Oh, it takes two of your screens. So. Uh, so there we go. Send a smile. Anyway, uh, so any any other final thoughts or? No, I think I think it's great. Hopefully, you know, was it so from from a how challenging was it to install on your existing? Uh, so system? I had Office 64 bit yeah. running on there, and. Uh, it, I had to uninstall my 64, and not not because it, there there is a 64-bit version of their thing, but you can't have mixed versions. So because I had uh -huh. some, uh, some access uh, engines that were 32-bit, it got right. all messed up. So no problem. I just had to uninstall my 64-bit. 2010. 2010. Right, right, right. You don't have to if you yeah. if you're if you just got to run all the same yeah. uh, architectures below okay. it. Um, but you could run it side by side if you want. You can run side by side. Okay. That's one of the big changes, right? Or, yeah. Is because it's running an app, yeah. they run side by side. Right. So exactly. Yeah. And then I saw also like from from managing or from from a licensing perspective, right? To to have it on uh, you know to uninstall 
or to disable it and put it on a different computer is much much yeah. cleaner, much easier. Because it's centralized streaming, yeah. they, the license is held in the cloud. So yeah. you know, if you do lose your machine, or you could you could disable the license, mm -hmm. I assume, or you can move the license from one PC to the other, right. to the other, which of course wasn't the case with OEM licensing in the past. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, good. There's a lot of advantages to that. So good. Good. Let's see how the uh, how people take it out. All right. So what's well, available on the on the internet out there? So. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to uh, take a look at it and, and, and try it out, it's pretty easy, right? There's yeah, no there's, a, there's an e it's just a super easy download because it's virtualized. They, it downloads the client first, installs the client, and then that client will uh, stream the applications as they're done. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking time to share it with us. Uh, and how do people get a hold of you if they want? I am to? Paul Friesen, P. Friesen at knowledgetech.ca. We'll put it on the video as well. And no Twitter account. Not yet. <laughs> so uh, and so again, thanks, Paul. Again, it's Paul and Yaroslav, both from Knowledge Tech. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks.